Magic. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming for our presentation, and we are so sorry for delay. And uh, we will talk to you about uh, revisiting, uh, our revisiting ATM vulnerabilities and um, about um, our uh, researches uh, and uh, about our um, relationship with vendor. My uh, name is Olga Kochetova. He is Alexey Yosipov, and let's start. Uh, so we are part of Posty Hack Days team. Uh, we are mm, making uh, many researches of various system, uh, different system, and uh, maybe you know some of them. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, we um, give you some overview of ATMs, uh, our reasons and results of uh, our research, and. Uh, uh, about, of course, our relationship with the vendors. And uh, first of all, we must be sure that uh, you have understanding about ATMs in general. And uh, let me give you some words and some pictures uh, uh, about ATMs. ATM is a set of hardware units, uh, such as dispenser for money, card reader for um, Max Stripe and EV bank cards uh, and uh, encrypted pin pad for entering pin, uh, pin and other input and so on. Uh, these units produced by different manufacturers and uh, put it together uh, by big ATM vendors. <clears throat> the top box of ATM named uh, cabinet or service zone. There are PC, card reader, uh, printer, uh, sensors, uh, UPS and pin pad. All parts connected to PC through COM or USB ports. Uh, vendor thinks that service zone is not for money and uh, produces a plastic cover for cabinet uh, with a simple single lock. Really simple and even the same for some uh, models uh, for different banks. Uh, and safe is for money. Uh, there are steel and concrete sandwich with two types of locks. Uh, there are rotary code or electronic locks and uh, lever locks. A dispenser is a device which contained, that, uh, contained in the safe uh, and including four cassettes for cash and one cassette for ejected notes. Uh, what about software? There are hosts uh, which control devices and contains Microsoft uh, Windows as operating system, uh, main software for control um, devices and for interaction with customers uh, by kiosk mode. Uh, and there are maybe some software for integrity control or antiviruses for control of injecting and executing malware. Uh, what about integrity control? Uh, guys from bank could, could, be, uh, could, could use this uh, software, but usually they don't. Uh, it because uh, integrity control systems and ATM software have some problem. Devices uh, break down, host is underpowered, and so on. There are also some crappy software which is really needed uh, for operation of ATM. For example, some um, Acrobat Reader version 6, uh, old Flash Player, and other. Uh, and even some of such software opens ports for connecting from arbitrary host. ATM's uh, devices are unclear. There are some strange microcontroller, non-ARM architecture with real-time operating system, and guys who love uh, IDA Pro are very sad about it. Uh, yes, Windows XP is still alive. Uh, there are, uh, in the first part of uh, previous year, uh, almost all ATMs around the world uh, run on Windows XP. Uh, despite the fact that uh, Microsoft stopped to support uh, and release security updates. Due to the existence of golden image uh, of ATM software, those 9,000 vulnerabilities may not be patched ever. Uh, for you to understand, golden image is a disk with operating system and all uh, software that is common for all ATMs of uh, such banks. Uh, this was some overview, and uh, let's speak about uh, what makes us roll. We have to admit that we love hacking uh, in the film and want to rob the bank when m money is dispensed from ATM pack by pack. Uh, but that is only a dream. There are plenty of brutal ways, uh, each of which is not that uh, simple or interesting. 
you can cut up ATM door, you can blow it with explosive, but it's too noisy and too hard for me. I'm just a little girl. <clears throat> but there are alternative ways. Uh, news are full with information or on much more intelligent attacks. Uh, open cabinet, uh, attach some USB or uh, device or CD drive, uh, and gather money, easy and a pie. Uh, what an attacker can get? Dispenser uh, consists uh, of four cassettes with uh, money, uh, each of which can uh, consist of two or three thousand uh, banknotes, so we can access more than two uh, hundred thousand euros uh, with one attack. Of course, it's an ideal situation, uh, but it gives you baseline on average bill of such an attack. Uh, and a little disclaimer before we start our stories. ATM vendors and the ordinary people eat our brains uh, about security of ATMs. They say that we are preparing malicious guys and uh, other evil people to hack ATMs and create direct losses to the banks. Uh, and for now, we would, like to, we would like to show you that many things of, um, uh, we are saying is already known by those criminals. But we can't say that you should not repeat anything um, that we are saying at home. But in the field, go ahead. Uh, it's a joke. <clears throat> in every good criminal act, there are three main parts. Motive. Uh, it's everything is already there. It's all the money that they want to steal. Means. It's all that gives them access to undesired by developers, of course, uh, to the ATM parts of inform or information. And opportunity describes everything that uh, leads to this situation. For example, uh, lack of knowledge in security field or misunderstand misunderstanding of some computer science. Okay, let's start with our first story. Uh, this story is about malware. Uh, first cases of uh, infection were detected in 2008, but it's possible that other named or unnamed malware were already there before and for sure that uh, they were afterwards. And some of them uh, could be uh, stole, could, could stolen uh, some sensitive information, for example, track data or PIN, and another ones uh, have a possibility to jackpot at uh, uh, ATMs and uh, make it stolen, uh, make it empty. Uh, for example, uh, Tupkin is the uh, most popular uh, malware in the, uh, in the Eastern or Europe and uh, in Russia. Um, um, several millions uh, rubles was, uh, were stolen during a uh, short period of time, and uh, according to submissions, uh, to, to virus total submissions, uh, we noted uh, that. Uh, it might be popular malware in the USA, Canada, France, and China. So, how jackpotting malware works? First of all, uh, criminals uh, need to gain uh, physical access to the ATM. Um, they attach it to uh, some devices, USB or CD drive, uh, and the infection uh, ATM. They injected uh, uh, their malware to ATM, and after, uh, after that, ATMs uh, could be rebooted. ATM uh, uh, under control. Criminals uh, gained uh, uh, control under ATM. And uh, in several days, uh, another part of criminal group, uh, some another bad guys, uh, came to ATM and... Uh, make a theft. Uh, how it works, how it possible? Uh, ATM works with XFS. XFS means uh, extension of fin financial services. This specification was developed by Microsoft in 1991. Uh, and uh, this uh, specification provides as uh, uh, application provi um, programming interface and the uh, service provider interface. Uh, 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 especially for ATMs. Uh, application uh, sent comments to XFS manager. 
XFS manager transmitted uh, these commands to service provider, and service provider uh, translated this uh, this command to devices. Okay, um, we are injected uh, our malware. We are on the host, and uh, uh, what we should do to uh, to make magic, uh, we need to. Um, we, we can uh, send our commands instead of uh, original software. Uh, what about the dispenser? Dispenser is the uh, most popular and most interesting device uh, because we have possibility to withdraw cash without any authorization. Um, we can control cash and cassettes, and uh, in some models we can open safe by software. Uh, about uh, card reader. We, of course, can insert, eject, and retain cards. We can read and write track data. And uh, about EMV. Uh, maybe you know that uh, in Google Play or Android mic Market uh, ha have some applications which provides uh, us to access, uh, access to payment to payment application, to payment history uh, of NFC cards. And um, uh, we... Um, May, uh, we can uh, access uh, uh, to payment uh, history stored and cheap with EMV reader. Uh, Pinpad. Yes, uh, there is an encrypted uh, device and export of the key is not available, but there are uh, open mode and secure mode and uh, switch it, uh, it off. Uh, we can switch it for stealing pin. Uh, okay, I will continue. Uh, as you understand, uh, PinPad is the device that is said to encrypt every data that is passed out of it. But actually, it's not the case. Uh, for some operations, for example, you're entering amount of money, you're entering your phone number, for example, for submission for some uh, uh, utilities or so on in the PinPad. And this data is transmitted in clear text. Uh, here is the simple workflow of uh, the pin pad. You can uh, issue uh, normal entering mode or secure mode. In normal mode, every, every press of the button is transmitted in clear text. So every malicious software on the ATM can gather all, all that information. But for the secure mode, it's uh, more complicated. First of all, it authenticates host. So there is uh, some cryptographic material for it. Then it's uh, securely entering the pin code in the pin pad without any uh, echo uh, outside of the pin pad. And afterwards, it returns a uh, pin block that's encrypted. But what uh, if we break all comments that are using secure mode? We are issuing only the normal mode comments to the pin pad and gathering all the pin codes from the ATM. Yes, for person who are using this ATM, it will be, oh, I entered uh, erroneous pin codes and the uh, host doesn't accept it. Um, maybe some uh, software problem. But uh, maybe it's a, software, it's a piece of software uh, that gathers your pin codes uh, in clear text. And for the uh, further comments with the same, the, with the same uh, card, uh, all the comments can be passed through so uh, uh, no one will notice anything. Uh, if we are speaking about uh, such complicated middleware like XFS that allows to access any uh, dispenser, any, uh, pin code, uh, any pin pad, any card reader out there in the ATMs, we are speaking about authentication. And if we are speaking about authentication, it will be a good thing to block all other access to the uh, service, uh, XFS manager or service providers. But the long story short, authentication is not even there. Uh, bankers think that uh, if we execute code on the ATM host, then e everything lost, actually. And uh, exclusive access is not there because uh, it, it exists, but not for security, but for utility purposes. For example, not to break dispenser with uh, issuing two commons to dispense. 
any piece of software with minimal privileges can access XFS Manager. That's strange, but it's out there. Uh, and what about XFS specification? Uh, should we reverse it? Should we call guys with it raw or something like that? Actually, we don't know yet. But if you Google XFS ATM, maybe you find something. That was about malware. Uh, but there is uh, another class of attack. Uh, Brian Krebs, in his article, showed that uh, some guys in um, some country uh, accessed the uh, server zone of the ATM, uh, placed a uh, phone into it, and closed the door. After some days, there were no money in this ATM. When investigators the scheme to the ATM, they left only with the wiped out uh, Samsung uh, phone and no further information. It's uh, called black box attacks uh, because no, no data is um, gathered. It's because uh, ATM vendors think that if they won't show any specification, any firmware for their devices, that it will be very difficult to use uh, such devices in evil purposes. But uh, what we think about, uh, about uh, what we think about uh, devices in ATM. It's a dispenser, it's a cut reader, it's a pin pad, it's sensors. It's all connected with the host. Host is the Windows machine. What Windows machine can do? Actually, it works on COM ports or RS-232 and USB ports. What if we connect some device that just pass through all the data of the COM port or USB port and get this information? Let's start with the easiest one. It's a COM port. It's standard interface. No specific drivers are needed for Linux operation systems. Uh, and for Windows, it's uh, complicated. There are different drivers for such common port. There is no authorization embedded in these uh, devices. And uh, the secret is, is security through obscurity. Uh, it uses insecure proprietary protocols. There is no standard for accessing devices in the ATM. Uh, for an attacker, it's an easy task. You can just sniff all the data and replay it if you can. What are advantages? Uh, it's a direct control of ATM, of ATM devices. Uh, you, don't know, you don't want to mess with the antiviruses, with integrity controls, with full disk encryption. You just connect it to Raspberry Pi and execute commands. There are different undocumented functions. For example, like in routers, different administrator protocols, uh, different tools that allow you to extract uh, cryptographic keys for pin pads and so on. And it's really easy to produce a hardware sniffer that can gather all information that passed through these channels. Uh, when you came to the ATM, you won't see anything that is suspicious or evil. What about protocols? Protocols are not complicated. Uh, there is a stop and start uh, sentinels, the bytes that uh, separate commons from one from each other. There is no uh, such thing as uh, uh, making or encrypting this data. On this slide, you can see the command to dispense money from the ATM. On the black, uh, uh, on the black, uh, <laughs> there is uh, six cassettes that can be dispensed uh, with the with these commands. Uh, each cassette is identified by its number, and uh, the second number is uh, amount of amount of banknotes from this cassette to dispense. You can just connect. Uh, send this command, and dispenser will do anything for you uh, without hesitation. Uh, we have two libraries of Python. We have uh, little money, and we have ATM box. Uh, so what we can do with it? Uh, I'll show you some demo. I hope it will work. Will it work? Oh, 
here's our attacker and our ATM machine. Uh, she uh, enters the service zone of the ATM, attaches Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi dongle and battery, and leave it all there. All attack with this little pause is about 30 seconds. ATM works like it never, like anything happened. Afterwards, other attacker access uh, the access point of this Raspberry Pi and issues commands in the web interface. We send dispense command. Unfortunately, we have no sound, so there is no d dispense sound of the ATM. We open shutter. And we present money. Money. When I speak to different vendors, they say, whoa, you have very old ATM. We don't use any compots whatsoever. We use USB devices that are hard to break, hard to access, and so on. Here is two pieces of code. code. It's actual code that uh, is used uh, for some major vendor. The difference are we use different library, and we use different connection. That's it. We send the, same, the exact same command to the ATM machine, and new device act like uh, the older one. Nothing changed. But that was uh, about accessing the internal parts of the ATM. Uh, many banks say that it's uh, quite hard to access ATMs. There is no ATMs in the internet. There were two attacks uh, in this year. It's a Kerbinek attack and man the middle attack. Kerbinek is an attack when uh, malicious guys uh, uh, hacked uh, the processing center of ATM and gathered access to dispensing money from any ATM connected to it. And the man in the middle is uh, something different. They just disattached uh, Ethernet cable from the ATM, connected its, their device to the ATM machine, and dispense money. Uh, what are possible connections to the processing center? It's a VPN, uh, hardware or software. Uh, it's an SSL. It's a Mac authentication. You can use firewalls to protect ATMs from uh, outer access. And of course, you can use IDSs uh, to, detect, to detect these attacks. Uh, well, bankers say that they're cost effective. The, they use nothing. If you use Shodom to search for words about three major vendors of ATMs, you can find this picture. Uh, on this picture, there are about 3,000 ATMs accessed from the outer internet without any authentication and as you understand, with Windows XP, with the unpatched system, with the different software and hardware connected to this device, there are plenty, plenty of uh, ideas how to uh, dispense money from it. We are not advising you to search for it, but to understand that any ATM that you see uh, on the street can be already hacked and can be used for gathering your pin codes or pen codes. And um, most frustrating part of our uh, research, who cares? Actually, no one cares. Uh, when we say to the vendor of the card reader that we can use it to scheme in anything that is passed through a comport, uh, he said, hmm, 
maybe you shouldn't connect anything to the card reader and use it in evil purposes. That will, that will be good for you. And the data on, on the COM port, who cares? There are different problems with the uh, direct access of the ATM machines. Uh, we can issue comments for the dispenser. We can uh, dispense money from it without uh, operating system. And uh, the answer from the vendor was, uh, "Sorry, there is a three-year three warranty for the uh, for your dispenser, and we are not going to fix anything." And uh, as we know, th these dispensers are used widely in uh, large banks, and they even don't know that uh, there is a problem and that uh, such attacks can occur. Another window that is uh, much better than previous, we can't say anything about, uh, they uh, have problems with such attacks in previous years. And they provided uh, mitigation. They used cryptography. But as many of you may, may understand, cryptography is not the thing that can be done r right, but it can easily be done wrong. Uh, if uh, some vendor says that we are using IS, we are using OpenSSL, OpenSSL is another, another point, uh, we use uh, different encryption for any communications. Uh, there are other problems of cryptographical means. For example, you can use a cryptographic key of one byte. It's a usual case, actually. And we managed to get this information to the vendor, and he issued a patch. For now, some of the dispensers are protected from the session attacks. But there is actually the XFS that is still there, and... We can do anything about it. What about SSL? SSL is used on the ATMs and post terminals. Uh, according to PCAP DSS uh, 3.1, there is, should, no, should be no more SSL connections in the, in the field. But uh, banks say to us uh, attacks on SSL, maybe we will patch in some years. And when we say it's not PCI DSS compliant, they say, mm, we are PCI DSS compliant, but we don't want to uh, pin test our ATMs. We know there, there are problems, but we are PCI DSS compliant. How to live with all this? Uh, the vulnerabilities that we have shown you, it's uh, low hanging fruits. There is no actual need to go further to reverse firmware and so on to access ATMs and hack them. Vendors are not much interested, and maybe drawing attention to such vulnerabilities will create a better place to uh, fix all these vulnerabilities and uh, live in a better place. And unfortunately, banks are not that competent to know what they're doing. Uh, they believed in vendors, they believe that they are saying to them that they are not vulnerable. That's actually a bad thing. Uh, what we propose, if we are criticized, we should propose. Implement mutual authentication of every command on the ATM machines. It's not hard to do. Uh, there is plenty of uh, code space on microcontrollers. It's plenty of uh, hardware to do such a thing. Make peer review of XFS protocol a standard. Uh, it's a thing that allows you to uh, dispense any, any amount of money or create a software schema. Uh, there is an opportunity to create better uh, control of the dispenser. You can just authenticate all the comments on the processing center, but not on the ATM machine as, as it is done uh, today. And as for trust environment, it's not about ATMs. For accessing the ATM machine, uh, you can just um, use key that is common for different ATMs for one vendor. Or we can show you some 
other friend of ours who helped us to open ATM machine during our work. If you count seconds, it will be about 60 or 70 of them. This guy sees this ATM for the first time, and he was just curious how, how to manage to access it. <laughs> we don't know them. Uh, we can't disclose this information. <laughs> it's a secret. ATM is open. Uh, we would like to thank the guys who helped us with our research, especially Alexander Tlapov, uh, who managed to reverse engineer the protocol of the dispenser, and all other guys, there are plenty of them who helped us uh, so, kudos to them. So, it's everything that we are we're going to speak about. So, if you have any questions, we are welcome to answer them. Thank you. No questions? Are you sure? Спасибо большое за выступление. On the map, uh, how did you detect that uh, the, those um, IP were ATM, not uh, usually uh, servers? Do you have? Uh, oh, is it uh, your data or some external source? Uh, Shodan accesses uh, uh, s different services that uh, show you the banner of the device or s some, uh, s some information about the device. And in this exact case, uh, there was a uh, name of the brand of, of, some, uh, device, of some devices that were shown. So we, we think that it's... Uh, this, this is ATM because we uh, have this ATM at uh, our place and we have the same exact uh, service that is, uh, that is there. Thank you for your question. Hi. Uh, you were talking about the XFS protocol. Yes. And I was wondering, is it uh, documented? How did you write the functions for discover the API functions that you used? Uh, as I already mentioned in the presentation, uh, we can disclose this information. And uh, we, uh, we, we thought that it's uh, complicated to access this information. But... Um, there Just is advice. It. <laughs> okay, thank you. No more questions? Thank you. Thank you.